What's up, everybody? Judah Rika here again with another edition of Mixed Tip Mondays. This week, I'm going to talk about templates, all right? Setting up your template and making a template and why we use templates, all right? Now, some of you guys have seen on Instagram my engineer etiquette videos, and I wanted to combine the two for this week's uh, Mixed Tip Mondays. Now, I want to tell you what a template is, why we set them, and how we set them. A template is... Uh, a session that you set up, whether it be through Logic, the Reason, or Pro Tools, that kind of gives you a head start in the game. So instead of when you open Pro Tools and everything's just blank, you have a template that has all your delays, your reverbs, your EQs, all your stuff that you would normally use in a, in a real life scenario, uh, just right there from the beginning of your session. So I want to show you guys my template in which whenever you open Pro Tools, it says, do you want to create a blank session? or create session from template. So I have my own Geo the Rican template. As you can see, uh, Pro Tools comes with like hip hop, jazz, and you can just take a look at those uh, templates and just kind of pick and choose what you want. So I'm gonna just open this one. Uh, I'm gonna just open this one. I'm gonna call it Geo the Rican template. Save it to the desktop. And just show you how I have my things set up. So right off the bat, you're gonna see that uh, there's a whole bunch of tracks here, uh, labeled, of course, engineer etiquette, a uh, lead, my double, the ins and outs, my ad libs, my hook. If I have a feature, I have a lead two, dub two, ins and outs two. Now, typically, um, if, for example, if somebody wants to record with reverb, or if an artist likes to hear themselves with auto tune or delays and stuff like that, never, and I say never, put it on the actual main one when you're recording. Why? Because when whatever signal you take, you're going to record that signal with the effect you have on it. And you do not, I repeat, you do not want to do that. You want to have just a straight bare signal that you're able to manipulate and construct or deconstruct later. Okay? So audio engineering schools will show you that if you put a send on your track and output it to reverb, Let's say now uh, you're sending some of your signal to this auxiliary track here, which is fine and dandy. I'm not against that. However, in my personal engineering sessions, I usually have either one track or all of my tracks uh, output it to a auxiliary track or through a vocal bus or an aux bus. What that means is my input would still be uh, you know, whatever mic input you use, um, input one or whatever the case may be. But my output, instead of being analog one and two, instead of the sound going straight out of the speakers, now it is going to a auxiliary track. In this case, it's going to my verse bus. My verse bus is right here. Now, in this bus, I have a, uh, I have an EQ. I have another EQ, a compressor a DSer and a multiband compressor. I don't really use that all the time. Sometimes I take it out. So what does all of this mean? This means that I'm kind of mixing as I go, really. It gives me a head start on the recording process because the artist, what they hear out of their headphones is all it is working together. So they're hearing themselves clearly, um, nice and loud. They're not hearing bare signal. When you work with uh, a lot of singers, they don't like to how they sound bare. A lot of singers may need uh, some pitch correction or they might need some color to their vocals to feel confident. Most of the times it's through reverb, okay, whether it be D-verb or anything like that. So that's why I have it send from the auxiliary track through another auxiliary track to my reverb, delay, everything, okay? So let me break this down and I'm going to quit this, quit the session, shift command W. And again, I'm going to start Apple N, create a new session and I'm going to create a blank session. Okay. Name it template demo. And as you can see, my Pro Tools session is completely blank. I don't have no, no tracks, no master fader, no nothing. Okay. So I want you guys to hit Shift-Command-N, and you're going to be brought up to the new tracks menu, okay? 
uh, for sake of demonstration, let's do five mono audio tracks, okay? If you hold shift left and right, it changed it to mono. All right, we wanted mono and stereo. Shift up or down, you get different variations through the audio track, aux track, master fader, and everything, such and such. So let's make five mono audio tracks. Hold shift command down, and you get another selection. Let's do four stereo auxiliary tracks. I'll explain why in a minute. And just one stereo master fader. Okay? So, so now this is the beginning of our template, okay? I want you to click the first audio track and just name it, all right? Just say lead, okay? A nice trick, if you hit command right, it'll go to the next track without you having to hit okay and having to double click on the next one, okay? So we're gonna hit double, again, command right, uh, ins and outs, uh, ad libs, and just name one extra. Okay. Now for the auxiliary tracks, you want vocal or vox aux, vox aux two, because you never know if it's a feature or if you want to separate the hook from the main vocals, which I would suggest you could do that as well. So for this demonstration, how about we name this hook aux. Okay. And now your next two, we're just going to do delay. And we're going to do reverb. All right. Now let's just, let's just set this up. So everything's running uh, real smoothly. All right. So now these five tracks are all going out of our speakers. We're just getting this straight bare signal. We don't want that. We want this signal to go to a vocal aux track. So with all of them selected, right, which is, you can click one, hold shift, and all of them will be selected. Go to the output, and I want you to hold shift, control. Click the output and set the bus to uh, I had them labeled, but it would typically be one and two and things like that. So let's just do Fox. Okay. Okay, so you saw how they all changed simultaneously to Vox. Okay, now the signal is being routed out of this audio track into a Vox bus. Now we have to set that. So we're going to go to our, voc our vocal auxiliary track here, and now we're going to set the input to that same corresponding bus. So now anything that's happening here will be routed out into this auxiliary track. And that way, bare signal is being recorded and captured onto that lead track. Now, um, again, I mentioned this in my kick and in my snare mix tip Mondays. It varies from producer and engineer to producer and engineer if they want to do equalization first or if they want to do compression first. So let's just put an EQ. You can do a, a seven band. Hold shift and you'll be able to see uh, another plugin at the same time. And now you have a compressor. Okay. Now, um, if you're recording a lot of vocals, male and female kind of differ. Either way, I like to just roll off at least 100 vocals. You want to not roll off so much male vocals. You kind of want to because they're uh, the deepest voice might not even go past, uh, might not go under 100 hertz. So you could probably, for safekeeping, put in like 75 hertz and kind of boost... Uh, the high frequency at like seven gives it a good good balance not too much don't don't do this or don't cut it uh, you know so low just put it up a little bit all right and this around again seven Hertz all right so that's your EQ setup 
your threshold in your compressor, you kind of want to set it a little high because you want most of the vocals to go, to go through. As the session goes along, you will, you will always switch back and forth and do any adjustments you want, okay? This is where I typically add another EQ and I just do uh, any, you know, uh, complimentary EQing, you know? This is where I kind of find the artist's sweet spot. I may just leave it blank just so it's running through and I could always adjust it, all right? Now, again, you can add another compressor, so you could do corrective compressing as well. So whatever the first compressor didn't do, if it only brought down the highs and it wasn't doing a good job of bringing up the lows, you could always just add another compressor and just really have fun with it. Do another compressor. And then that's it. You could have a DS and all the types of stuff, but these are the two ones, uh, EQ and compressor, that I have on all of my vocal auxiliary buses. Next step. You got an artist to say, hey, can you put some delay on my voice? I like to hear myself with delay as I record. Again, never put it on directly on the insert because you're going to record delay along with your track. All right? What I like to do, set up another auxiliary bus, which we have right here, our delay auxiliary track. On that, you could just go to delay. And just leave it like that. Do not do anything with it. If you want to, you could just hit it uh, a quarter note, hold down shift, and it will it'll do it to both. You see, if I just click one side, it'll only do it to one side. If I hold shift down, it'll adjust both of them. Okay? And just have a delay there, and the same thing with a reverb. Just have the reverb there so they, they could just hear themselves. They can hear themselves with the reverb, you know? So on your vocal auxiliary track, you see your vocal auxiliary track sends A through E, and now you're going to assign them, okay, to a bus. In this case, again, I have them labeled. Your first send and your second one, all right? Depending on your preference, will determine the order, okay? And now you're just going to have to set them, set up your auxiliary inputs once again. And then reverb. So what's going on? You have your audio tracks routed out and into a vocal auxiliary track where you're getting your signal, okay? This is where you're going to do any corrective or any um, engineering direction that you're going to do. You would do here through all of, the, all of the inserts that you have on your auxiliary track. Any effects are controlled by these bus sends. So if these are down, you're not going to get any reverb or delay, and you have better control of the amount of signal that is being sent through these effects channels. All right? And that is basically it. I mean, you could put maybe like a limiter on the master track, but I like to do that afterwards. But set this up. Go to File, Save as Template, and then you could just be like... Um, Hip hop template, okay, R and B template, rock template, you know, uh, producer template, you know, if you have everything lined up like that. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I hope you guys really learn from it and utilize this in your everyday practice, whether you're an engineer or producer, okay. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and repost. Thanks again for tuning in. Can't wait to see you guys next week. Peace.